Christian Broadcast Ministries presents CBM Worship. We invite you to worship with us as we praise and worship our Lord together through music, prayer, and God's Word. We bring you CBM Worship from the Sanctuary of the Wayside Temple, 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia, Ohio. We pray you'll be blessed and encouraged as we worship our Lord together. song yeah I was just kind of thinking through things even as we were planning this week but you know there's a lot going on obviously in our nation there's been a lot going on this year and even long before that Um, but you know we as the body of Christ our prayer ought to be that you know we're filled with the the Holy Spirit I was having a conversation with somebody recently and 
Uh, they're like, so you're just a conservative. I said, I don't, you know, I don't, sure, I guess. Uh, but, you know, be, before I want to be conservative or liberal or whatever, I want to be found faithful to the call that Christ has put it in me, right? And I think, you know, we read in, I think it's First Peter, where it tells us we have this living hope, right? And we live in a world that's so hopeless, but we have hope. Why? Because of Christ, because of his death, his burial, his resurrection. And I personally don't have a lot to offer uh, when it comes to everything going on in my friends' lives or other people's lives around us, other than to give them the hope that I have, right? And so I think, you know, our primary responsibility ought to be to tell the gospel. And this, this song just really tells the gospel. So join with us as we sing this song. It's called Living Hope.
Praise the Lord. Now that, that'll just make you want to shout. Woo, give the Lord another hand clap. Lord, we praise you. Woo, our living hope. I'll tell you what, that'll make you want to dance. I'm, I'm telling you. Woo, thank you, Jesus. This old troubled world of ours can't take away the victory we have in Jesus. And the hope that possesses our soul. Oh, let the Spirit of God minister to your heart today. Let's worship Him as we pray. Father, we're just so thankful we can gather in your name. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome here. You're so faithful. Lord, you're already ministering to our hearts. And as we praise you and worship you, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, just put your arms around us in a wonderful way today. Fill us to overflowing with the hope and victory that's ours in Christ Jesus. Lord, we ask you to bless this service today. Minister to our heart. Teach us some things. Lord, remind us of truth connected to walking with you today. Lord, in this troubled time, we need to deepen our walk. We need to draw near to our God. And Lord, we need to find our all in all in you. And Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But we know that you hold tomorrow. And we know, Lord, that you hold us in your hand. Praise your name. Fill us now, Lord, with faith, confidence. And Lord, let your peace rule and reign in our heart, that peace that passes all understanding. Father, we pray for each family in our fellowship today. We love each one. I know some are traveling. Grant them protection and blessing. Some are home today, Lord, that are recovering perhaps from sickness. And others, Lord, are waiting for a more opportune time to come and assemble. We just pray you will encourage their hearts in this hour. And we ask you to meet the needs and the lives of each one. Lord, we just thank you today. How could we praise you enough, Lord, for your great love and the joy of the Holy Ghost that's down in our heart today. Lord, it's so good to be drawing waters from the well of salvation today. Praise your name. Bless this service now and help us to faithfully lift up and magnify the mighty name of Jesus. It's in his name we ask and pray.
power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall He can't break through. Oh, praise the name. There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. There's nothing that our God can do. Amen. All right, Neil. We got to sing a little more. Let's stand as you're able. Did that song stir your spirit just a little bit? I'm telling you what, don't sit there like a bunch of deadheads. Hey, you're serving the living God today. Our country is a troubled place. We need faith to arise. If there's no faith and confidence in the church of the living God, America has no hope. Let's sing like we got a God on the throne who can hear and answer our prayers. How about it? Let's sing. That song's full of faith. Amen. Just Sing one it. word. Yep. You heal what's broken inside me. Just one word. And you revive every dream. Just one touch. Just one touch. I feel the power of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes are open to see, my heart can't help but believe There's nothing, there's nothing that our God can do There's not a mountain that He can move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do There's nothing that our God can do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do Sing, I will believe I will believe for greater things There's no power like the power of Jesus Let faith arise let all agree, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Sing it again. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do Oh, I know there's nothing that our God can do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do
Amen. Somebody shout glory. Give the Lord another hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Thank you, Lord. Nothing our God can't do. You know, this world seems to be so paralyzed by this uh, virus that has spread. It's, it's still out there, obviously, and we're still fighting the battle. You believe in God for greater things? Amen. I don't know. I can't speak for you. This world seems to think we just got to live with this forever. But I got news for you. Our God is going to bury this thing. Amen. Help me now. You folks so buried in unbelief and, and so, so, so caught up in the world, you, you can't believe God today. The Lord Jesus Christ is the great healer. When he, when he walked the face of this earth, uh, he healed all manner of sickness and disease, and, and he pushed it back. This is our God today. He's got his protection around us. If we get ill, he can heal us. He is the way maker. He's the mountain mover. There's nothing our God can't do. You folks ought to start praying. You know, I, I'm afraid yeah. that some of us just getting settled in like we have to put up with this thing. Why don't we start praying and say, Lord, could you push this back? Amen. You know, the yeah. world preaches a different kind of faith. Yes. They preach all the time, Brother Terry. Amen. <laughs> they just preach the wrong faith. Right. They preach and preach and preach and preach. You pretty soon you're about half afraid to walk outside your door. Dear Lord, I thought that virus was the size of a, of, a, of a bird about ready just to dive on me out the door. I'm not trying to make light, but I refuse to live in fear. And I try to be practical and wise, and I will wear a mask, by the way. I don't have one on today. And maybe along the way, we might need to wear I don't know. When they want me to wear one, I'll wear one. We're going to start school up this fall, the Lord willing. And if they want us to have masks on, we will have them on. We're going to do what we have to do to, to, to be wise. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it's not right for the church of the living God to be paralyzed in fear. The Lord God has not given us that spirit. Amen. Now, we'll be practical and wise. You know, I don't wallow around in any kind of virus if I can help it. But my trust is in the living God. And I'm trusting him to take care of me. And by the way... If I graduate to heaven tomorrow from some other ailment, don't, don't sing no sad song for me. Uh, don't you dare do it. You crank up uh, victory in Jesus and you talk about my victory in Jesus because the moment I'm absent from this body, I will be home with the Lord. Hey, we're not a bunch of defeated people today. Let faith arise. Have great confidence in the Lord while you're being practical. And then in your prayer closet, you let the Holy Ghost drive every ounce of fear out of your being. Be the day I'm afraid to walk through Walmart. And not afraid to walk through Wally World. Not afraid to hang out with you. Terry and, <laughs> Terry and Brother Al, they're the ones in arms away because I could reach them with the... With, Whatever. Are you encouraged today? Man, I'll tell you, these songs, they, they've been preaching all morning. I want to talk to you about how to build a walk with God. Now, you have been walking with the Lord. Just receive this and let it strengthen you and remind you and just edify you and build you up. Some of you are younger. Let, let it really speak into your life. But I'm just sharing a few thoughts. There's some things that will be left unsaid today, but I want to be an encourager to you. Surely every Christian understands the necessity of building a strong walk with God in the day in which we live. Am I saying it right? Um, the words of two hymns that I learned over the years came to my mind as I was preparing this message, and I want to quote them as I begin. The first says, in times like these, it says, in times like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, excuse me, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle. Be very sure. 
be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, my friend. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. If you're anchored to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not too worried about the storm, are you? I don't know what will happen tomorrow in our beloved nation, but I know this. I'm anchored to Christ and his word. How about you today? Amen. And then the words of this great old hymn is such a blessing. It says, just a closer walk with thee. I love it. I am weak, but thou art strong. Yep. See, my strength is, I'm not boasting in my strength. Brother Carl, if we make any boast, it'll be in the Lord. Amen. I am weak, but thou art strong, Jesus. Keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord. Let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me gently, safely o'er, to thy kingdom's shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee. Granite Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Do you have a walk with the living God today? How close is your walk with the Lord? And can you echo the words of that little chorus? Lord, daily walking close to thee. Yes. Lord, just a closer walk with thee. You have a promise that if you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. You can walk as close to the Lord as you want to. Amen. And I encourage you today to get with the program. You're going to need a close walk with God if we see more difficulties in this country. And um, only those who have a close walk with the Lord will have settled peace and have the strength to weather the storms that might come. Are you interested in a closer walk with the Lord today? Amen. Then I want you to think about these points that I share. And I'm going to enumerate them first, and I might speak to a few of them because our time will get away. But let's pray together, and then I'll share these thoughts. Father, we thank you for this service today. Our hearts have already been lifted and encouraged and I pray, Lord, that you'll fill our hearts to overflowing with faith and confidence in you. Help us to be wise, but also help us to be fearless. Help us, Lord, to, to seek you for wisdom, but also, Lord, to make you our confidence. And Lord, in our nation today, with so much uh, dissent and division, we understand why, Lord. There's a spiritual battle. It's always existed, but it's very intense today. And in this hour, Lord, we need a praying church like never before. Help us, Lord, to seek your face. Help us to humble our hearts. Help us to cry out to you for new grace upon our land. For favor, Lord, not that we deserve, but Lord, favor that you graciously grant in answer to the prayers of your people. Lord, you're very long suffering and patient towards us, not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. And Lord, you do hear the prayers of your people. And as the Holy Spirit helps us pray, all that's asked in the name of Jesus, according to your blessed will, it will be granted. Praise your name. Now, Holy Spirit, help us to be strong. And Lord, equip us with a deeper walk Help us to draw near to you. Build our walk with you, I pray. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. I um, <clears throat> think I'll enumerate these points, and, and um, I know I'll not speak to all of them at length today, but I want you to think about these various uh, themes related to a closer walk, a walk with God. How would you build a walk with God? If I was teaching a young man or a young lady, uh, you're saved, you're, you're in your teens, or you're, you're a young adult, you're 18, 19, 20. You've got a lot to learn when you're 18, 19, and 20. You still got a lot to learn. You got a wonderful foundation, perhaps, but now you got to build the house. 
How are you going to have a walk with God? How do you build a walk with God? Well, first of all, the scripture says this dogmatically. It says, honor your creator in the days of your youth. Amen. Honor your creator in the days of your youth. And as I studied on that, I realized the Lord is not simply speaking to that short season of youth when you're like 12 or 14 or 18. But he's talking about a little broader sense of the word. Remember the, your creator in the days of your youth. Remember your creator in the days of your strength. Amen. Generally, you have more strength when you're younger. As a matter of fact, the latter part of that verse says, you know, the, the evil days, the more difficult days are coming when you won't find no special joy in that. So there's a contrast between the days of your strength and the days when perhaps we'll not have the same amount. And so uh, certainly there's a broader application here. So how would you honor your creator? Well, consider these points. First of all, set your heart to seek the Lord. Doesn't matter if you're 18 or 80, 16 or 60. You set your heart to seek the Lord. There needs to be a hunger and a thirst in your spirit today for the things of God. I mean, you're hungry for the Lord God himself. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. He's not just the bread of life when we partake of him on day one when we receive him as our savior. He certainly is then, but he's my bread of life today. We feed upon the Lord. Set your heart to seek the Lord. Next, respect his will with obedience. It's one thing to know something about the will of God. It's a slightly different matter to actually walk in obedience to the will of God. Amen. You need to have a passion in your heart that says, Lord, you teach me what your will is and I am going to walk in it. You need, you need to let the Spirit of God stir fire in your heart. You say, you know, if I live out now for Jesus, I'll be leaving some people behind. Yes, you will. Some of your friends aren't going to have the same exuberance about following Christ. They're not going to find their joy in the Lord. They're not going to find their deep satisfaction in a life of obedience and yieldedness to Christ. Let them go their way. If they want to live a shallow, defeated, uh, unfruitful, disobedient Christian life, that's their business. Don't go with them. Live with some fire in your spirit. Live out and out for the Lord Jesus Christ. Respect his will with obedience. How would you honor your creator? Well, you don't just honor him with your lips. You honor him by setting your heart to seek him. You honor him by respecting his will with obedience. And then you allow him to correct you. Amen. How on God's green earth can we talk about honoring the Lord God when he seeks to correct us and you turn right around and start fussing with him? Yeah. Yeah. Bless him Lord. Keep a humble spirit. Keep a teachable spirit and honor your creator by saying, Lord, you show me the way and I'll follow. Amen. And a lot of times you're setting out this way and the Lord says, Ross, that's not quite right, son. I got to correct you. Go, go, go this way. Uh, yes, Lord, I'll honor you. You want to walk with God? Honor your creator and serve him with your strength. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind and Strength. Amen. Next, learn to spend time alone with God. Every one of us can enter the secret place and have fellowship with the living God. And every time we make time, we'll find that he's already there. You don't have to get in the prayer closet and say, well, let me see if I can get the Lord's attention today. Learn to spend time alone with God. Learn to worship him in private. Bow down to him. Some years ago, it's been, time gets away, but I was struck one day watching people in another false religion. They were bowing down. They do that religiously. In different groups, in different religions, they bow down to false gods. And it just kind of smote my heart. I said, Lord, these people don't know the true and living God. I do. It's like the Lord said, son, you ought, to, you ought to bow down before me. You say, well, don't you do that, Brother Russ? Well, yeah, 
I do, but I, I, I heard that loud and clear. And I thought, shame on us Christians when we don't bow down. I physically can still bow down. Now, my knees aren't what they were when I was 20. But I can still bow down, Brother Clayton. And I make that my habit. I bowed before the living God this morning. Amen. And as long as I have strength in my body yes. daily, not once a month, once a year, somebody says, well, Brother Ross, that's your habit. That's not mine. Well, you better be listening today because that, this habit needs to be yours, too. Amen. If you're too proud to bow before the living God, who do you think you are today? Are you a redeem, redeemed sinner saved by the grace of God? You ought to be on your face daily saying, thank you, Lord, for saving a wretch like me. Yeah. You know, I know where I came from. I also know where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. I don't make my boast in Rusty. I make my boast in Jesus. Yeah. Apart from Christ, I'm a wretched man. But in Christ, I'm all dressed up and ready for God's heaven. Oh, yeah, I got, I got it. Don't send me no emails. I bow down and I worship. I bow down yes. and I worship. Now, in a couple of moments, we're going to lose our television audience. And today, I want to say to our television audience, you're going to miss part of the sermon because I'm going to share a few more thoughts before we worship in our closing here in the, in the service. But uh, tune in. Uh, Brother Brian, I have it ready for you next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. You can see the whole thing. All right. But now, are you going to build a walk with God? See, everyone in this building that knows Christ as Savior, you've already entered into a walk with God. Your assignment is to deepen that walk, a closer walk. Now, you're going to do it by honoring your Creator. You're going to do it by learning to spend time alone with God, which includes offering daily thanksgiving and the practice of confessing sin daily. I'll speak to that another time. The next point, you need to build a walk. In order to build a walk with God, you've got to love the house of God. Next point, if you're going to build a walk with God, you've got to forsake the world. Amen. Next, if you're going to build a walk with God, you've got to avoid compromise with the world. Yep. And I want to illustrate those with some scripture here before we're done in service today. But then next, if you're going to have a walk with God, you better get ready and expect persecution from the world. And you've just got to get yourself equipped and ready as believers. Jesus Christ said, if you live godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to suffer persecution. Amen. And Jesus speaks to that. And I'll, I'm going to read some scripture there. And then the last point, as you're walking with God, you've got to learn to be faithful. Learn to spend time alone with God. Learn to love the house of God. You know, I'd love to preach a whole sermon on that. We'll do it sometime. You've got to stay connected to your local church. And we have a challenge in these days where our church schedules have been hindered. I'm not even sure all of our local assemblies are even back in, in operation yet. And this is not healthy for the body of Christ. Uh, gee, the Lord says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Well, yeah, I understand. We've got some unusual circumstances. So we've got to have the wisdom to kind of work through and be wise. We're not having Sunday school. We don't have Sunday night. Our Wednesday night crowd has got plenty of elbow room. Yeah, we, we can deal with it. Well, we got to have our church life, ladies and gentlemen. You get dis disconnected from the local church and you're disconnected from the cause of Christ. You're unplugged. You're not plugged in. You're unplugged. Now, I'm not saying you're not a Christian. Please, come on. I'm talking about how are you going to have a walk with God without a vibrant local church life? And uh, one thing I want to say along this line is, by love, serve the whole body. You know, we are... A snapshot, any local church is, of the broader body of Christ. The broader body of Christ consists of young people, preteens, our children, uh, teenagers, young adults, uh, couples with children, uh, those who have raised their children, kicked them out of the house, and, and uh, those that uh, have grandchildren that uh, now live with them, and on and, and on and on it goes. We, we enjoy all of our family life, and we, we really do. But that's, that's a local church. You're to love one another. Now, I have about zero patience with this attitude that gets in the hearts, what, of young or old, for that matter. On the young side, it's, well, I don't have enough friends. I don't want to hang out with Brother Russ. Well, that's about as selfish as the day is long. 
you haven't grown much in the Lord yet. You don't come to church just to hang out with friends. You come to church to feed upon the word of God. You got six, six seven days to, to hang out with your buddies. And there's a plenty of context for that. You come to church to sing the songs of Zion. You come to church to worship the living God. You come to church to get your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. You come to church so that you can be fed this book so you can grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You come to the house of God so you can be equipped to stand against the wiles of the the devil who would like to destroy your life. Amen. You know, one thing that really bothers me, and I've gotten older now, but listen, sometimes in our lives, I'll take sports. Sports can illustrate things pretty well for us. Now, stay with me. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Did you ever notice that most of the time, uh, you know, coaches of teams generally, now they, every coach had to start out relatively young, but usually they had assistant coaching jobs when they're 20 and 30. They didn't hold uh, head coaching positions till maybe they were late 30s. Certainly that's young, 40s, 50s, 60s. You take a coach like Bill Belichick. Some of you know who that dear gentleman is. He's won more Super Bowls than anybody in the world in the history of the game. I don't know if he's 70 yet, but nobody in their right mind, no 18, 20 or 22 year old would say if they're entering the NFL, the last thing I want to do is hang out with Bill Belichick. And you know why, don't you? Because he knows more about the game than all the 18 and 20 year olds put together on planet Earth. And when you hang out with him, you're apt to win a Super Bowl. You don't get rid of him when he when you don't get rid of NFL coaches when they're 50 and 60 and 70. Most of them are in their prime. And they, they retire because they just get too old to walk. They don't retire because they don't know anything anymore. Now, what happens in the church? Satan, he slips in and he tells young people, uh, you don't want to hang out with Brother Russ. Now, I am 60 now, but you could have hung out with me in my 40s, 50s, 60s. I was younger. I hung out, hung out with Brother Shelby. And I grew up under him. And I learned a lot from that dear brother. He doesn't understand how much influence, the number one influence on my life. There's no question. Uh, I used to come to church on Wednesday nights when I was a boy and church was in the junior church. And uh, I was in church on Wednesday night, Dad. And I enjoyed watching the adults have Bible study. Brother Cody, I, I was just learning. I, I, I just learned it. But uh, there was a certain element of entertainment there because I always knew if brother and so-and-so made a comment, the brother so-and-so on the other side of the building is going about, about to make a comment. And by and by, there was interesting conversation going on, if you understand what I mean. And, and so, but I would learn. But you learn from the older. One of the gigantic mistakes in the, in, the, in the life of the church of Jesus Christ in the last 50 years in America is to separate their youth from the Bill Belichick's of the church. Can you understand what I'm preaching? Terry, did you get my illustration? <laughs> I love this brother. I appreciate he comes in here and puts up with me every week. So hang out. There's always a context to learn from the younger. Oh, you know it. Especially, uh, you know, young adults, you get married, you, get, uh, you learn from other young couples that are married and those just in front of you. You always, but that's the body of Christ. You learn from one another and your church life needs to be comprised of a snapshot of the whole body. Young people, hang out with the older so you can learn from them, so you can glean the wisdom. And they won't always be able to teach you everything. You're going to learn from the younger too. But you need the body of Christ. You need to stay connected to your local church. Don't ever let the devil steal your church life. Amen. Plant one right between his eyes. Do you want to walk with God? You let the devil destroy your church life and you're not going to have a walk with God. Amen. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved, but the goal of the Christian life, Brother Cody, the goal in the Christian life is not to be the puniest Christian you can be. Clayton, the goal is not to be just a weak little carnal Christian that drifts through life and drops into heaven one day. Oh, we're, we're not just going to drop into heaven. We're going to heaven. As you read the book, you discover that the Lord wants you to live a spirit-filled life. 
He wants your life dominated by the Spirit. You know, if you could ever learn as believers to become bond slaves to Jesus Christ, you would enter into such a place of freedom you've never known, such a place of growth and victory and happiness and joy and fullness and satisfaction and a sense of purpose. Make Christ your life and everything else will fall in place. Amen. Forsake the world. Moses is an example of that. I'll, I'll, I'll have to recant. I won't read the scriptures because I... I'll get too long, but you can read them. Hebrews 11, 24 through 27. You know this passage. Moses came of age, and you know what he did? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Don't just read over that. And that passage says that he turned his back on Egypt, and he chose the reproach of Christ over what the world could give him. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to discover that you've got to turn your back on this world. I'm in the world, Brother Jack. I love people and, you know, put me in Walmart and mix me up in the crowd. And, you know, you wouldn't tell the Christians from the non-Christians just to mingle a little bit. But let us interact for just a little bit. Let us talk a little bit. Amen. And before long, we find out, oh, Wow. You really do love this world. Your hope's wrapped up in this world. You don't know Christ. And on and on we could go. See, I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Amen. I'm of a different spirit. Yep. I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're going to walk with God, you got to forsake the world. Yes. That doesn't mean you don't have a job. You, 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 we're in the world. We're going to function as salt and light in the world. But you have to recognize as believers that you're following the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you follow him, you're going to be out of step with this world. And when that temptation confronts you and it's Egypt or Christ, which one are you going to pick? Amen. Moses looked and he said, no, no. Suffering with Christ is far. That's, that's the riches right there. I'm going that direction. Read that passage and meditate on it again. Don't doubt me. It's already happened for a lot of you, and it happens even in my life and even in older Christians' lives. And listen to me. You will be confronted with that choice. Jesus or the world. If you're going to have a walk with the living God, you're going to have to say, I'll take Jesus. And then forsake, you know, avoid compromise with the world. Now, I could give you an example, and you can go home and study this. The life of Lot would be an example of this. And, um, oh, Lot, he cast his tent towards Sodom. Next thing you know, he was living in Sodom. And the next thing you know, he was calling the wicked his brethren. And the next thing you know, Mr. Lot lost his family. If you compromise with the world, you are headed for spiritual disaster. We'll speak to that another time. And then expect persecution from the world. Jesus said in Matthew 5, you know, you're going to experience this. He said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. I don't know everything about tomorrow. Don't know really, Zach, I really don't know a thing about tomorrow. But I know this. I need enough discernment, Kevin, to recognize that right here in America, in my lifetime, I'll probably face persecution that I've never seen before. Doesn't mean I'll see the same measure that other brothers and sisters endure in other lands. But the battle that's going on in America today, I already discern it. I already recognize it. I preach about it as much as I can. But what I see is the reality that the wicked want to make it unlawful for me to believe 
this book right here. They already feel that way. We had some, uh, Lord help me not call him names, help me Lord. Some fella calls himself a politician, got a D behind his name. I don't know if that matters much or not, but he blasted religious freedom the last few days. He said the concept of religious freedom is just bogus, it's just a bogus idea. He says we're just hiding behind that so that we can discriminate against other people. He sure doesn't know what America's about. He doesn't know the spirit of America. He's an ungodly man. Perhaps I'll lose that freedom. But I, I can't, Kevin, I can't speak for you, brother, but listen. I'm going to preach Jesus if they make it unlawful. You know, they threw the Ten Commandments out of our culture some time ago. And what do we have in its place today? Moral confusion. Idolatry that's rampant. A nation that's hanging on by a thread. Cast out God's commandments and now we can't define marriage. My dear Lord, so-called normal people want to try to tell us we can't tell our children if they're a male or a female. It's heartbreaking how far our nation has fallen. Persecuted for righteousness sake, persecuted because we teach that a man and a woman ought to marry, persecuted because we teach that men are men and women are women and those that are confused about it need loving, compassionate counsel from godly people, not from the bankrupt wells of ungodly psychology. Amen. We need this book. Amen. We're a long ways away. The world is. But there is a church in America. You're a part of it, are you not? Amen. Let's live for Jesus. Brother Arlo, we're not going to be mean-spirited. We're just going to live for Jesus. And when our light's shining, Brother Dan, somebody says, you know, I hate you because you stand up for righteousness. Well, if they accuse us falsely, Brother Jack, and they revile us for the name of Jesus, when that happens, it might be distasteful. We might suffer in some measure, but as soon as you can get along with your Savior, lift your hand. Say, Lord, we count it a privilege to have suffered shame for your name. And I'm going to do a little rejoicing right now, Lord, because great is my reward in heaven. And then here's a good way to finish today. You guys better pray for me that I write out my sermons. Can I let you in on a little secret? See, I didn't write out all my sermon today. I just gave myself a bunch of points to preach from. And so I don't know when I'm done. Amen. That's right, brother. Now, here's a good place to close. It's pretty powerful, though. Jesus is speaking to the church of uh, Smyrna. I'll just read it for you. Revelation 2. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Now, just stop right there. The Lord spoke this to a real, literal church, the Church of Smyrna, historically. But see, his message to these seven churches find application to local bodies from generation to generation. And we can find truth here for us today. And the Lord says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. What if we're called upon to endure some hardships in America? Well, don't fear. Uh, in this case, he said, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that you may be tried. and You shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcomes 
shall not be hurt of the second death. <laughs> Am I preaching to some overcomers today? Hey, we will overcome. And we will not be hurt by the second death. Amen. Jesus says to his church, be faithful. Yep. If you're going to have a walk with God, yes, Lord. you're going to have to be faithful. Right. Got to be faithful. I don't know what's coming tomorrow, but Sister Rose, Rose is that you over there? God bless you. I'm, I'm, I got a pick on her. She, <laughs> I don't know what's coming tomorrow, sis, but I'll tell you what, we're going to be faithful. Amen. Neil's younger, I'll pick on him. Neil, we're going to be faithful, aren't we? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless. Don't you love the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Hey, let's walk with God. Let's walk with the Lord. And we walk with him. We're going to find Brother Floyd day by day. We walk with the Lord. I got, I'll just speak this to you, brother. Day by day, the Lord's just going to put his arms around you in a fresh way. Yes. Amen. He's with you, brother. Praise the Lord. We draw close to him, Brother Din. The Lord says, I'll draw nigh to you. Let's stand together. I appreciate you being patient today. And praise the Lord. What a wonderful place to be. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for our fellowship today. Lord, we need much encouragement in this hour. And we pray, Lord, your spirit will lead us and help us. Help us, Lord, to be wise. Help us to serve one another by love. Help us to be thoughtful. It has been a blessing for us to worship together at this time, and we invite you to come worship with us. CBM is located 3809 Maple Avenue in Castalia easily accessible from State Route 2. Take Route 2 to State Route 101 South and turn left onto Maple Avenue. We would love to have you visit. And don't forget, it's your prayers and gifts of love that bring this program into your home each week. Send your gifts of support, prayer requests, and comments to CBM, Box 247, Castalia, Ohio, 44824. CBM Worship is a production and presentation of Christian Broadcasting Ministries. CBM, proclaiming the word.